My next hand is against Lagosaurus, and he is, as you might have guessed, very, very loose aggressive. He's the single most loose aggressive player that I've ever fake played against. He loves to bluff people, loves to push people off pots. Um, he does value bet kind of thin uh, to kind of balance uh, all his bluffs out, but certainly not thinly enough. He's a fairly decent thinking player, but anyone who uh, can see him for what he is uh, and can kind of understand his ranges can pick him apart if they do it right. He does run over a lot of the weaker players, though. Anyways, I call him the big blind with pocket sevens, which I think is standard. I get in a lot of trouble, uh, tough situations if I three bet a hand like this against a player like him. In flops, king four five, two diamonds. We have a diamond in our hand, uh, which is more important for us hitting a set on a non-flush turn than it is for uh, our backdoor flush draw. But it's actually not even that important. I don't know why I mentioned it. We check call, which is totally standard. I think there's not a whole lot to be said about it. There are other options, not folding. You could check raise uh, for, you know, to take them off of hands with outs. But I, I think the check call is the standard play. Anyways, the jack spades hits. That is not a good card for our range. In the last hand, we talked about uh, how a scare card hits that's not really a scare card. The jack of spades is a legitimate scare card because he's still value betting all his kings and. He's also now uh, has all of his jacks in his range. He's certainly value betting any jack. He's a strong enough player to do that. So I'm not happy about this card. Uh, the other thing it does is that it puts, uh, or it gives a lot of his hands more equity against my hand. So you know, a ton of his hands have two overs, six outs, but now a bunch of them pick up another four to eight outs if they didn't already have it. So this is actually a very tough spot against most people. Because although you're good a decent amount of the time, it's not an overwhelming majority of the time, and the times you're not good, you don't have a ton of equity. He has outs to improve, and you also have reverse implied odds because you don't know which cards hit him. He's going to be able to kind of outplay you in position. Uh, against Lagosaurus, though, he's betting with 100% of his draws here. Any gutter he's betting with, uh, obviously any flush draw, open ender. But he's also betting a good amount of the time with total air. Uh, just hands like 9-8 offsuit he's betting this turn with a, more often than he's not betting it. So because of that and because of how many hand combinations there are that you know don't have us beat right now and uh, don't have a ton of outs, uh, we can call this turn in my opinion. And you know we are going to get in tricky spots on the river, but that's the risk you take by being a good player. I uh, I checked the river, uh, which is the Ace of Diamonds. Pretty much the ultimate scare card. Uh, it completes a straight, it completes the flush draw from the flop, and it also completes, or uh, sorry, it also improves any ace to top pair. Uh, that legitimately improves a lot of his range. You know, when this river hits, um, I look down at my sevens, and I go, I'm probably you know, not even good against a random hand much over half the time. And uh, I checked to him, and he bets. That actually does change a little bit. Uh, kind of like the first example, this takes some of the hands that were beating us out of his range. He's not going to be value betting any jack on this river, uh, other than, you know, two pairs. So that actually is a decent amount of hand combinations. And he's also not going to be value betting his kings. Uh, he might value bet a hand like king-queen, king-ten, but I would weight that fairly lightly just because of uh, how large he bet. I don't think he would bet that large that often with a hand like that. Um, and he might not bet at all, to be honest. Uh, certainly not with lower kings, weaker kings. Uh, he can obviously have two pair sets, uh, the straight uh, flushes, and he can be value betting any ace. He value bet. He'd certainly play ace deuce this way uh, most of the time, in my opinion. So there are a bunch of hands that beat us. Um, but since we did take a, a decent chunk of the hands that beat us out of his range, uh, that's a good sign. And then we can also look at all the draws that missed. 
which, uh, you know, not that many hands, like 10-9, uh, queen-9, <clears throat> uh, 6-8, 7-8, 6-7, 3-6, I guess deuce-3 hit. Anyways, you get the idea. All of those missed. And also, you know, we said, and it's true, he's going to be firing the turn with hands like 8-9, uh, 10-8, things like that, queen, deuce, even, just because he views the turn as a scare card. Now, even though there are those bluffs in his range, the there are not that many more bluffs in his range than value betting hands. So, in order for us to be able to call here, he has to be bluffing with his air a pretty large percentage of the time. And the thing about this ace of diamonds and the type of player that Lagosaurus is is that he is he is bluffing this river pretty near a hundred percent of the time that he has air I think when he uh, gets to this river with a hand like 10 high he's gonna fire it near 98 99 percent of the time uh, he views this as the ultimate scare card which it is you know he loves to bluff. It's the perfect opportunity to bluff. Uh, you know, the board got scarier and scarier for our for our sevens, which is actually, you know, a good chunk of our range. And so because of that, I think that we are able to call him. And I do go ahead and call. And he did have the 8-6 gutter. And I still think that, uh, like I said, hands like 9-8, 10-8, uh, queen, 7 are in his range. And I did run this through Poker Stove. It was pretty inexact just because we have to kind of guess how often he's firing turns with 10-8, things like that. I gave him 80% of hands pre-flop, and then I took out um, I took out all the hands that are that paired the first four cards, basically. So hands like 5-8, king-8, 4-hit, jack-8, and then other ones without 8 involved. But uh, And then I left in all the hands that I said he would value bet, and I did leave in all of the 8-10 queen-deuce type hands. So we do have to take, we have to wait it so that some of those are removed. But um, the thing about it is he's firing the river with those hands all of the time. So all that we have to account for is how often he is giving up on the turn with them. And um, I didn't technically run all the math, but in my head I think it's pretty clear that he's firing the turn enough of the time that we have the odds to call on this river. And it's just another example here where actually the scariest card in the deck became a card that let us call. Whereas if the river was a uh, offsuit um, eight, for instance, you know, one draw got there. Um, maybe even offsuit, let's say just a four. If a four hit, I think that we m might still be able to call probably against him actually but it's not that much better of a situation or as good a situation as much of a better situation as you might think